Uh, this is the chemistry 7.1 to 7.4 recording. Uh, it's generally really easy. Uh, but before starting, uh, I have to shout out my day one here, uh, Ziad Shokat. Uh, honestly, I don't know why I haven't shouted them out. I shouted them out yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's my day one. Uh, thank you, Ziad Shokat. Love you, bro. El uh, Mohim. Uh, I'm gonna start with 7.1. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's start. Uh, let's start. How many protons does lithium have? Just take the atomic number three. Yani. At this point, everybody should know this. What's the symbol of deuterium? Deuterium. Remember, I told you that deuterium was the isotope of hydrogen that had two neutrons. Okay, because of deux. Deux comes from the D E U X. It's French. Uh, that's why they call it deuterium. Deuterium. Well, my fault. My fault. They call it deuterium because it's French for two. Okay, it's uh, that's number two in French. Okay, and uh, uh, the, the one for three is tritium uh, because tri, you guys know tri is uh, three and it also comes from the French word trois, uh, because, which means three also. Uh, El Mohem, uh, deuterium is the one with two neutrons. Okay, that's the isotope of hydrogen that has two neutrons. I explained this in my AMS recording, I remember. This one, I'm, <sighs> I will do it fast. Let's start with neutrons. Neutrons are 35 minus 17, 18, 27 minus 13, 14, 23 minus 11, 12, 32 minus 16, 16. Protons always the atomic number. Uh, you take it. Uh, the electrons is you take here 17, but it became negative, so it gained one. So 17 plus one becomes 18. 13 it's three plus, so it lost three electrons to become positive. For 13 minus three, it's 10. 11 lost one to become positive so 11 minus one is 10 16 it gained two to become minus two comes 18 uh, that's that's it question four uh which ones are atoms the atoms are always the neutral ones right uh but you have to look at which ones are neutral this one's one plus one minus one this is neutral but we take this one this one's again the neutrons don't count uh plus minus you take this one uh split a tick Okay, uh, this is plus, but there's no minus, so this is positive. Uh, this is plus, but two minuses, but this is negative. Uh, this is plus, plus, minus, minus, but this is neutral. Okay, so A, B, and E. This one, this one, and this one. Which one is a positive ion? We said C. And which one is negative? We said D. Okay. Question five. The protons is always represented by the atomic number. And which one has an atomic number two? You just take the one with two protons. Question six. Uh, the mass number indicates the number of protons and neutrons. It's always mass number. If it's mass number, it's the number of protons and neutrons. Atomic number is just protons. What's the atomic symbol of the one with the uh, X21? It's going to be the one that has two, uh, two nucleons. Two, yani, the amount of nucleons, right? The one up is... How do I say this? Is the mass number. The number up is the mass number, right? Mass number. Which is protons plus neutrons, right? Okay. In this case, you have one proton. And how do you find the neutrons? Two minus one. So one proton and also one neutron. Which one has one proton, one neutron? This one. And in this case, they're just trying to test you to see if you know that if it has two uh, as, the, as the mass number, that means it has two inside the nucleus, if you see any. Question seven. Uh, the letter A is the mass number, and the letter Z is the atomic number. How many how many protons are here? Thirty five. Neutrons. You just do eighty minus thirty five. Electrons. It's neutral, so it's the same as the as the protons. Question eight. Uh, isotopes are the same element that have the same atomic number, but different mass number. Why different mass number? Because different number of different number of neutrons. Always neutrons. The neutrons is the one that changes. Which one is hydrogen one one? Okay, this is wrong because H one 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 minus one is zero neutrons uh, and one proton. Okay, if, uh, this is wrong because this has a neutron here, which is wrong. Uh, if it should be this one, but the question is wrong. Okay, question nine. Uh, what is positive proton which is held in shells around the nucleus it's always the electron because it's outside the nucleus it's different for the isotopes neutrons because what's what changes between isotopes it's always neutrons 
it has a negligible mass the electron and it has a neutral charge obviously the neutron yani ana i don't think i have to explain which one's a positive ion you have to check which one's too small has more protons than electrons right and obviously it's a because there's no electrons here uh, this one's neutral this one's neutral and also this one's neutral okay which ones are isotopes isotopes yani same protons but different neutrons right for this one has three protons nothing else has three protons this one has one proton and this one also has one proton but they have one neutron here and this one has zero neutrons here okay for these are isotopes because same amount of protons the isotopes are the ones that have the same number of protons okay for b and d are isotopes and which one has a mass number of four yani which one has four inside the nucleus this one has six uh this one has two this one has four this one has one if you take c uh question 11 the mass of a proton is one amu neutron is also one amu but the electron is one over 1840 am okay that's why we see the mass of an electron is negligible because it's too small okay uh memorize that uh nucleons what are the nucleons nucleons are protons and neutrons okay so whenever you say nucleons that's protons and neutrons that's why sometimes we say the mass number is the amount of nucleons because nucleons means protons and neutrons question 13 what's the atomic number of cl 37 the mass number 35 What's the number of neutrons? You do 35 minus 17, 18. What's the number of electrons? 17. But Cl minus, since it gained one, is going to be 18. Okay. Question 14. Okay. This I explained this in my AMS quiz, but it didn't come. To, uh, to find the average molar mass, which is determined by M dash, is equal to percentage 1 times uh, percentage, let's say percentage A times mass of A plus percentage of B times mass of B okay and the uh, percentage of c times mass of c and so on and so forth if you have four you continue doing whatever for all of this over 100 so in this case it's going to be the average molar mass is equal to 92.23 times what's the mass 28 plus 4.67 times 29 times 3.1 uh, sorry plus 3.1 times 30 plus uh, 3.1 times 30 all over 100 always over 100 because you're dealing with percentages okay you're gonna get uh, I'll do it on my calculator quickly uh, you get uh, 28.1087 they want three significant figures but you just take 28.1 uh, obviously grams uh, the question after this is the same thing but now they want you to find percentages okay they have 35 and 17 right uh and the average they gave you is 35 uh, 0.5 so what will the percentages be this is what you do we know the average molar mass equals percentage one times mass one plus percentage two times mass two and so on and so forth all over 100 right in this case the, the average is 35.5 percentage one we don't know mass one we know is 35 plus percentage 2 we also don't know but mass 2 is 37 over 100 this question will always come only if you have two isotopes okay it, you can't solve it if you have three isotopes but it will only come for two isotopes how do you solve this look percentage 1 we'll keep it as percentage 1 times 35 however percentage 2 is actually 100 minus percentage 1 why because it's always 100 minus the other percentage if you have 10% 35 it's obviously going to be 90% 37 for example you know what i mean it's always 100 minus 10 90% it's always 100 minus the other percentage for that's why we put 100 minus p1 if you want to put x and 100 minus x it's also correct whatever you want to do but always put it as a variable and 100 minus that variable okay this is just math at this point p1 times 35 is 35 p1 100 minus p1 into 37 you have to distribute 100 times 37 is 3700 so 3700 minus p1 times 37 is minus 37 p1 all over 100 equals 35.5 solve this multiply by 100 on the other side you get 35 p1 plus 3700 uh, minus 37 p1 equals uh, 35 uh, no 3550 uh, continue solving 
35 p1 minus 37 p1 35 minus 37 is minus 2 p1 plus 3700 equals 3550 take 3700 0 to the other side it will be minus 2 p1 equals a uh, subtract this minus 550 is it 3550 minus 150 150 uh, how do I get minus five five zero? Minus uh, one five zero. You get P one equals seventy five. Okay, but P one will be seventy five, and P one is the one being multiplied by thirty five. But the percentage of thirty five is actually seventy five percent. What will P two be? One hundred minus P one. So one hundred minus seventy five is twenty five. Okay, that's the seven point one quiz done. Uh, let's do seven point two now. Okay, the 7.2 quiz, uh, it's really easy, but it's memorization, okay? You have some stuff to memorize. Uh, yani, question one here, which ones are liquid at room temperature? I told you guys, mercury and bromine are always liquid, always liquid at, at room temperature. Uh, which ones are non-metallic solids at room temperature? Sulfur and phosphorus. Obviously, sodium, calcium, and magnesium, they're, all, they're metals. They're saying non-metals. Which, which non-metals are solids? Actually, here in the book, they say some... Uh, non-metallic solids exist which are boron silicon phosphorus and sulfur okay uh they could ask you silicon they could ask you boron so just in case you know i'm showing you the book okay question two uh two solids x and y are investigated the solids react violently with chlorine fluorine and oxygen to give white solids what are x and y in the book they give you here there are two things that react with chlorine fluorine and oxygen two elements what are they? Potassium, which is K, and lithium, which is Li. So once they both react with chlorine, fluorine, and oxygen, a violent reaction occurs, and they form white solids, you see? And that's what they're asking in the question. Okay, so what are they? These two solids, they're uh, potassium and lithium. K is potassium, Li is lithium, okay? To give white solids. Okay, X and Y are passed over nitrogen. Y becomes dull, while X remains intact. Intact means it doesn't react. So what is X, what is Y? Okay, in the book, they say potassium, K. Okay. When it's passed over N2, there's no reaction. However, lithium, Li, when it's passed over N2, there is a slow reaction that causes it to dull. So which one dulls? It's going to be lithium. So we said Y becomes dull, so Y is lithium. And X remains intact, so X is potassium. Question three. This one memorize it. Hydrogen is colorless. Chlorine is yellow. Green bromine is... Uh, Brown is liquid. Remember, bromine is the liquid. Uh, iodine is the shiny solid. Uh, it's actually here, over here. This, uh, these colors, physical appearance. Uh, this table over here. But there's a there's a lot, Saraha, in this in the book here. Uh, give it a read. I doubt they'll bring a lot of questions from it. But really, in chemistry, they like getting questions that uh, yani mess you up uh, from the book. They're always yani in the book. Uh, you, you don't see them coming. So if you have time, please go over this section in the book. Uh, it looks confusing, but really, I mean, it's, 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 it's simple. So, yeah, I, I advise you to. Okay, this is the 7.3 recording. Uh, this is all easy. Okay, what's true about the periodic table? Elements in one column are called the group. Left side are, are the metals. And uh, they're arranged according to the atomic number. Elements in the same period have similar properties? Of course, no. It should be group. Each row is called the cell. Obviously, no. Each row is a period. Uh, in Mohem, uh, question two. Because uh, of the following. Okay, this is easy. I think everybody knows how to do this. Yeah? If, uh, yani, protons is just atomic number. Electrons is the same as atomic number. But here we're losing two. So 26 minus two is 24. Here you're losing three to become positive. So 26 minus three is 23. Neutrons, you just do 56 minus 26, 30, 30, 30. And mass number is 56, 56, 56. Okay. To what group does it belong? Transition methods. Okay, you can get this from the periodic table, or you can know. If you have different charges for the same element, you you automatically know it's transition methods. Okay, because only transition methods have different charges. That that that's it. Question three. A period is a row. Group is a column. Everybody knows this. Transition methods. Where are they? You know, transition methods are this are these in between two and three. So that that's that's it for seven point three. Okay, 7.4 now. Okay, 7.4. Uh, what are not properties of noble gases? 
uh, you know they are all monatomic, you know they are all inert, yani they don't react, and you know they're in group 18. But do their melting points and pointing points decrease down the group? No, they actually increase. Uh, are they highly reactive? Obviously not. We said they are unreactive. Which ones are noble gases? Helium, krypton, neon, moly, they're the other elements. Uh, what are true? Group 18, unreactive. Are they kept under kerosene? Do they react with chlorine? Do they react with water? These three are actually properties of alkali metals. I don't know if alkali metals are not uh, are they 7.4? I'll check now. No, actually, Mish Matlub Minko, you are not required alkali metals. You only need the noble gases. Fa up to noble gases, and you know the boiling point of a noble gas increases going down the group. That's it for chemistry. Make sure, make sure to know the limiting excess, which was in the 6.8 recording. Uh, that's you're going to be your written for tomorrow, inshallah. Maybe they add something else, but I know guaranteed you're going to have that in your written. Uh, good luck. I hope everybody does good. Thank you so much for watching.